Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park. On the mound for Detroit is Jim Bibby, whose record is 14-7 with a 3.84 ERA. And pitching today for the White Sox is Ken Kravick, whose record is 9-10 with a 4.06 ERA. And so yesterday we won the first game of the series, 4-3, to three, on a uh, late-inning two-run RBI single by Omar Marino. And uh, Morris got his 14th win. And uh, Aurelio Lopez got his league-leading 29th save. So um, a, pr a pretty good victory all the way around. And uh, today will be a little bit trickier because we have a back-to-back -back lefty. So I had to take out a couple lefty hitters today for rest. Um, we are uh, tied for second place uh, with the Orioles three games behind New York. So every day now we're, we're kind of doing the standings watch as we're on the final stretch here. So let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. And so you can see here we have all of the bullpen available today. And um, we'll take a look at the lineup. So Kemp and Parrish will both be out of the lineup. They were listed as tired. So Fisk will be catching today. And Brookins will be at third. Hebner will be the DH. And Bob Baylor will be in at left field for uh, Steve Kemp. So let's go ahead and do the Tigers lineup rundown. Over here on the right, you'll see the 1980 Top baseball card that represents that player. So batting leadoff and playing second base today is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second and at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third and at first base is Jason Thompson. Batting cleanup and catching today is Carlton Fisk. Batting fifth and in right field is Gary Hancock. Batting sixth and DHing is Richie Hebner. Batting seventh and at third base is Tom Brookins. Batting eighth and in left field is Bob Baylor. And batting ninth and in center field is Omar Marino. And on the mound for the White Sox, as I mentioned earlier, is Ken Kravek. He's making his 25th start. He is the ace of the White Sox staff. He's 9-10 and 10 with a 4.06 ERA. Uh, he, opponents are betting 237 against him. Uh, for the, the three previous seasons, Kravek led the White Sox in strikeouts. He was a third-round draft pick by the Sox. And um, he has two interesting notes to his career. One is he was the starting pitcher that was supposed to start in the second game of the doubleheader against the Tigers on Disco Demolition Night. But as you know, that game was forfeited by the Sox because of the, um, the riot on the field. So uh, he was the starting pitcher that night. And the other thing is he was the last pitcher ever to face Thurman Munson. Uh, Thurman, he struck out Thurman Munson in the third inning of a game in which uh, Munson was pulled and Jim Spencer uh, stood in for him the rest of the game. And then the next day, Thurman Munson died in that plane crash. So uh, just a couple of interesting facts about Ken Kravick. So now to the game. Here's Sweet Lou leading off, batting 248 versus lefties. And he hits a line drive to right field. It's caught by Rusty Kuntz for the first out. It's one down. Next up is Alan Trammell. And Trammell grounds it to first base. And Squires has it for the second out. So two down. Here's JT, hottest player on the team. He's got a nine game hitting streak. And uh, he's got 26 RBIs in his last 20 games. 
He hits a long fly ball to center field, but it's caught by uh, Chet Lemon for the third out. So let's go to the White Sox lineup. Here in the bottom of the first, it's uh, Joe Gates will be leading off and playing third base. He's uh, fifth in the league in stolen bases right now. Batting second and playing first base is Mike Squires. Batting third and in center field is Chet Lemon. Batting cleanup and catching is Mar Foley. Batting fifth and in left field is Ron Pruitt. Batting sixth and in right field is Rusty Kuntz. Batting seventh and DHing is Henry Cruz. Batting eighth and playing second base is Jerry Hairston. And batting ninth and at shortstop is Greg Pryor. And here's Jim Bibby, who's pitching for the Tigers today. His 28th overall start, 7th for the Tigers. He has not lost yet, although his last two games uh, have been kind of rough. Um, opponents are only batting 233 against him. Um, and he's a, he's a strikeout pitcher. He's got over 100 Ks, which um, you know, is unusual for this era, where uh, sacrificing and contact were, uh, uh, you know, uh, the most important thing that, that a player could do. So uh, here's Joe Gates leading off in the bottom of the first. And Gates is going to get a base hit to left field. Baylor gets it back in. And uh, there's some speed on the base path now with um, Joe Gates, his speed uh, beating 94. So nobody out. Squires grounds it to Trammell. And they have to go to first to get the first out. So one down. And uh, Gates is at second base. Next up is Chet Lemon. Lemon grounds it to Brookens at third. Gates has to hold. And they go to first to get the second out. So two down. And here's catcher Mar Foley. Batting 315 versus righties. And Bibby walks Foley to get to... Ron Pruitt. Maybe a good decision. Pru Pruitt's only batting 233. And Pruitt grounds it to Thompson. And there's a 1 2 3 inning. Oh, I guess uh, Joe Gates had that base hit. And also a walk, so I'm way off on that. <laughs> so to the top of the second, Carlton Fisk leading off against Cra uh, Ken Kravick. And Fisk, of course, batting 341 versus lefties. He hits lefties really well. And Kravik walks Fisk to start off the inning. So with Fisk at first, Gary Hancock comes to the plate. He had uh, two hits versus lefties yesterday to get his average up to 140 against lefties. And here he flies out to Lemon in center field. So there's one down. And Hebner's up. We're going to hit and run with Hebner. He's also a lefty that does not hit lefties well. But I didn't want to sit Hebner uh, two games in a row. So uh, Hebner's going to fly out and foul ground to the first baseman Squires. And that's going to leave it up to Tommy Brookins with two down. And he's going to hit a high fly ball to center. And Lemon has it for the third out. So to the bottom of the second. Rusty Kuntz leading off here. Game is still 0-0. And Kuntz grounds it to short. Trammell has it for the first out. Next up is Henry Cruz batting 345 versus righties. And Cruz grounds it to Brookins. And there's the second out. So two down. And switch hitter, Jerry Hairston's up next. And Hairston's going to get a base hit to center field. That's the second hit of the ball game. Oh, Hairston went for second. And Marino threw him out. So an outfield assist for, Mar for Marino. And we head to the top of the third. So some solid defense as uh, Bob Baylor steps to the plate here in the top of the third. 
And Baylor's going to hit a high fly ball to center field. 342 feet, but not nearly deep enough. So that's the first out. No hits for the Tigers so far, with Marino coming to the plate. And Marino flies out to right center field. That's two down. Next up is Sweet Lou, back to the top of the lineup. And Lou pops it up to Squires at first. And he's on the outfield grass, for the, catches it for the third out. So to the bottom of the third, this game's going quickly. Pryor leads off the inning, and he hits it on a rope to center field. It gets down and gets all the way to the wall. And Pryor has himself a double. So that's the third hit against Bibby. And we're back to the top of the lineup with Gates. Uh, he has no power, so we're going to bring the outfield in in case uh, he does drop a base hit in. Uh, instead, Gates grounds it to short. Pryor gets gunned down trying to go to third, so we get the lead runner at third base. So it's another bad base running blunder by the White Sox. But now they have speed on first. So one down, Gates at first base. Squires comes to the plate, and Gates does steal second base. So that gives him 33 on the year. And now we have to contend with Squires. So once again, we'll pull the outfield in. And 0-1 count. And Gates steals third base. So we're going to bring the corners in. And we're going to leave the in, the uh, middle infield back. So if it's, hit, if it's hit to the corners, we'll go home. Well, it won't make a difference. Oh, whoa, what happened there? A pass ball by Fisk. The runner from third scores. I thought that was a strikeout. But I guess he called it a ball. And the White Sox take a lead. So it's one nothing Chicago. And Squires flies out to center. And Marino has it for the second out. So with two down, here's Chester Lemon. And Lemon grounds it to third. And that's the third out. So the White Sox take the lead on a pass ball by Carlton Fisk. And we head to the top of the fourth. Tigers still do not have a hit. Trammell leads off. He walks. So we have Trammell at first. And we're going to hit and run with Thompson. Oh, Thompson misses it for a strike. Trammell steals second base on the missed hit and run. So now we're going to just have Thompson pull the ball, if he can. We try to get Trammell to third. And he's going to get the job done as he flies out to right field. Trammell tags up and he's at third base. The Sox are going to bring the infield in. So we're going to ask Fisk for a sack fly. But we'll take, a, we'll take a base hit as well. That is what we did not need as Fisk strikes out. That's only the first strikeout for Kravik. And it's going to be up to Gary Hancock to get Trammell in. And a wild pitch. And the Tigers are on the board. So they gift us back a run. And uh, it's all tied at one. And Hancock follows that by striking out swinging. And that's the third out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Game's all tied at one. Marv Foley leading off the inning. And he grounds it to Whitaker. And there's one down. Next up is Ron Pruitt. And Pruitt will get a base hit to center field. That's the fourth hit for the Sox. And we're going to guard the lines against uh, Rusty Kuntz. Well, it won't matter as Bibby walks Kuntz. That's two walks, no, no Ks. So um, this is Bibby's third rough outing as far as having control issues. Henry Cruz... It's going to fly out to right field. Pruitt does not advance. So two down for Jerry Harrison, batting 251 versus righties. Oh, no. 
I think that ball's gone. There's a three-run shot for Jerry Hairston into the right field bleachers. And the White Sox have a four-to-one lead. Okay, so two down. Greg Pryor. He's going to get a base hit to right field. And uh, Bibby is up to 76 pitches. As we're back to the top of the lineup with Joe Gates. And he walks Gates. Wow. How much longer can I go with Bibby? I guess uh, we have to give him a chance to get through the inning. We're already down by three. Squires grounds it to Trammell. And there's the third out. So a uh, bad inning for Bibby. Giving up the three-run shot to Hairston, his 14th on the year. And uh, we go to the top of the fifth. Richie Hebner leading off. Tigers still do not have a hit as Kravik gets his third strikeout. Next up is Tommy Brookins. And Brookins hits a fly ball to center field. And Lemon's got it for two outs. It's going to be up to Bob Baylor. We need to get a hit on the board. There we go. Base hit to left field for Baylor. And the Tigers finally have their first base runner uh, on a hit. So Baylor at first, and Marino goes down looking. So we get a runner on, and we still couldn't do anything about it. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Chet Lemon leading off, keeping Bibby on a short leash. Okay, so he does not have it today. So we're going to take out Bibby. Uh, it's a shame. He's in line to get his first loss. And I guess we're going to bring in Bob Stanley. Here's Stanley's stats. This is his 20th game for Detroit. He's 1-1 one one with a 7-2-2 ERA. Uh, twice as many walks as strikeouts. Opponents are batting 336 against him, so... He has not been good, but we need him to give us an inning or two. And Foley grounds it to Trammell. Is that two? It is a double play. So Mar Foley hits into a double play. And uh, with two down, Ron Pruitt is up next. And he rips it the opposite way to right field. And there's another base hit for the Sox. So Pruitt's on first for Rusty Kuntz. And Stanley walks Kuntz. So uh, runners at first and second. Henry Cruz is up next. And Cruz hits it high and deep to center field. Oh, but it's tracked down by Marino. 410 feet. In most parks, that would be gone. But just a long out here in Comiskey. We go to the top of the sixth. Tigers losing 4-1. to one. Sweet Lou leads off. He grounds it to second. And Hairston throws him out for the first out. So one down. Trammell's up next. Trammell walks. That is the third walk by Kravik. Uh, I feel like we need to try to get something going. So we're going to attempt to have Trammell steal second base. And Trammell's successful. He steals second on Foley. And we have a runner in scoring position for Thompson with a 1-0 count. Oh, he takes a strike three looking. So it's five Ks for Kravik. And it's going to be up to Fisk, who's walked and struck out today. And he's going to hit a pop-up on the infield to short. And that's the third out. So let's go ahead and flip the stats over to the in-game stats. Take a look and see um, who... <laughs> no one's really the player of the game. I guess Trammell has got two stol stolen bases. Maybe we should give it to him so far. So uh, at any rate, Stanley, we're going to keep him in the game here in the bottom of the sixth. Harrison leads off. And Harrison hits a fly ball to left field. And that's one down. Greg Pryor, number nine hitter, up next. He grounds it right back to Stanley. And Stanley gets him at first. That's two down. And here's Joe Gates. One for two today. He's got two stolen bases of his own. 
and he grounds it right at Brookings. And there's a third inning. So a one, two, three inning for Stanley. And we head to the seventh. Kravik pitching a one hitter, but he's given up, uh, he's pitched 93 pitches. So um, I don't know if he's going to make it all the way through. Hancock leads off the seventh by grounding to second. So one out. Richie Hebner's up next. And Hebner hits a line drive down the left field line, gets all the way to the wall. And Hebner has himself a double. So the second Tiger hit. And Brookins, who's 0 for 2 today, is up next. He's been struggling. But he is going to hit a two-run home run into the left field bleachers. And he gets off the schneid. He hasn't had a home run in a long time. That's the seventh on the year. And we close the gap to one as uh, Kravik is now officially listed as tired. So here's our chance to uh, take it to him. With one out, Bob Baylor comes up, and he gets the second hit of the game. And uh, no, we're not going to run on Lemon. He's a, he is a uh, all-star center fielder, gold glove winner. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to sacrifice Bunt and try to get Baylor to second. Omar Marino above average bunter and he lays down the bunt right in front of home plate and Baylor does make it to second base so a successful sack bunt and uh, the tying runs at second base with Sweet Lou up next and Lou walks and that's going to be it for Kravik I mean really pitched a pretty good game other than giving up the two run shot and they're going to bring in Dewey Robinson, who at one point was the closer this year. This is his 39th game. He's 2-6 and six in relief. A 3.78 ERA. Opponents are batting 240 against him. And he has five blown saves. So maybe that's why he lost a roll to uh, Mark Esser. So runners at first and second. Trammel's up. Two down. And Trammel hits a high deep fly ball to dead center <laughs> oh no 404 feet i thought that ball was gone but not nearly far enough as uh, it's caught by lemon and we go to the bottom of the seventh so we're going to take out um bob stanley who pitched two innings and uh, did pretty good got his era under seven and we're going to bring in a lefty and we have not thrown comstock out there in a while because he's been terrible but um, in four games as a Tiger, uh, he hasn't given up a run, uh, but he's given up three walks in two innings. And uh, so he's pretty wild. But we're going to ask him to get at least these next two left, uh, two of the next three batters out. And Squires hits it right down to the, to the dirt, and Fisk throws it away. Defensively, Fisk is horrible. And uh, Squires is now on second. So here's Chet Lemon, who hits lefties great. This would be this would be a smart move to walk him. So we're going to do that. So there's an intentional walk. And that's going to bring up Foley, who's a lefty. Lefty on lefty. Foley bats 152, and he's already grounded into a double play. So let's see if we can turn two here. Oh, he, that's even better. He strikes out uh, Pruitt. And there's the first out. So we're going to take out Comstock, who did not help much. And we're going to bring in Roger Weaver to face the righty. This is his 50th game, 4-0, with a 3.31 ERA. More walks and strikeouts. But opponents really batting 228 against him. And he's got a save. So here we go. Um, we're going to leave the infield back to try to turn two. And there you go, Taylor made double play. Oh, they only get the runner at second. Pruitt safe at first. And there's two down now for Rusty Kuntz. And Kuntz grounds it right back to Weaver. And there you go, that's the third out. So the error by Fisk uh, doesn't do any damage to the Tigers. And we head to the eighth inning. 
Jason Thompson, 0 for 3 today, his uh, hitting streak on the line as he finally faces a right-hander today. And he hits it pretty high and really deep, but not deep enough as Lemon makes the catch in right center field. So one down for Carlton Fisk. And Fisk strikes out. So Fisk is having a bad game all the way around with the pass ball, the error, and now he's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a walk. Next up is Gary Hancock. And Hancock, I believe, just tied the game with his team leading, what is that, 16th home run now. Wow. What amazing pickup he's been for us. And he ties the game here in the top of the eighth. It's a whole new ball game now. Here's Richie Hebner. He had a double earlier in the game. And Robinson walks Hebner. And that will bring up Tommy Brookins, who has a home run earlier. And uh, he's earned the right to swing away. And he's going to ground it just past the shortstop in the center field. And Hebner moves up a bag to second. And it's first and second. We've got something going on now. Uh, so I think, see, Baylor is two for three. I'm going to take Baylor out. And I'm going to bring in Champ Summers. All right. So we're going to take a chance that Champ is batting 260 versus righties. It's going to come through for us here. Oh, he more than comes through because <laughs> he just hits a three-run bomb into right center field. And that's going to be it for Dewey as they bring in uh, Juan Agosto, a lefty. That is, how many home runs is his fifth? Yeah, it's his fifth home run on the year. And that three-run shot to right center field. So here's Juan Agosto. 18th game now, 4-2 and two with a 3 ERA, more walks than strikeouts. Opponents batting 243, and Marino will face Agosto to start off the inning. And Marino's going to pop it up on the infield. That should be the third out. It is, and the Tigers take the lead, 7-4 to four on the pinch hit home run by Champ Summers. So we need to do a little defensive movement here. Um, hmm. I guess we're going to have to put Kemp in after all, which I didn't want to have to do today. But we do what we have to do. So that's our strongest defensive alignment. And uh, now we have a lefty. So that means Cappy comes in. And this is his 41st game, uh, 210 ERA, no, no record, uh, 26 Ks in 34 innings. That's pretty solid. Opponents batting 213 against him. And so here's Henry Cruz to face Capizello. Whoa. Cruz hits on a line to center field, and it's caught by Marino. I thought that ball was going to fall in. So one down for Jerry Harrison, who's having a pretty good day. He's two for three with a home run. And he pops it up in foul ground on the third base side. And Brookins has it for the second out. So two down, and we're going to let Capizello pitch to Pryor because we do have two lefties coming up if he does get on. And he will as it gets a base hit to right field. Only the eighth hit for the Sox. And we are going to guard the lines against Joe Gates. And he's going to hit a screamer to center field on a line. But Marino makes the catch. We go to the ninth inning. 7-4 to four Detroit. Sweet Lou leading off the inning. He's 0 for 3 today, but he gets a base hit into left field. So put one on the board there for Whitaker. And next up is Trammell. 0 for 2, two stolen bases. We're going to let him uh, swing away. 
Oh, that was a good idea. Trammell just deposits one into the left center field bleachers. And uh, that is his 13th home run on the year. As the Tigers are ahead 9-4 to four now. This game is out of hand. So nobody out. Here's Thompson's last chance to keep his 10-game uh, hitting streak going. And Thompson grounds to short, and that'll end his streak as he's the first out. So next up is Fisk, who's having a horrible game today. And there you go. He gets a base hit to center field. So Fisk is on base for the second time. One down. Gary Hancock to the plate. And he hits a blooper over the sh shortstop into left center field. And it's caught for the second out. So with two down, here's Richie Hebner, lefty on lefty. And Hebner flies out to center field to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. We're going to keep Capazello in there. Two of the next three batters are lefties. So Squires will lead off. And Squires pops it up just onto the outfield grass. And Trammell has it for the first out. So here's where it gets tricky with Lemon, who just crushes lefties. Full count. Oh, and he strikes out Lemon looking. I did not expect that. So two down. And it's going to be up to Marvis Foley. Foley grounds it to second base. And that is the ball game. Wow. What a crazy game. Good comeback by the Tigers. We win 9-4. to four, Taking two so far here in... Comiskey Park, and it looks like Dave Rosma is going to be injured and miss one start. So um, that is a bummer. Uh, we'll have to figure something out. Maybe we put Bob Stanley in there for his start. So um, let's take a look at the transactions. And there's the notation of Rosma missing a few games. So otherwise, nothing new. And uh, looking at the standings, so we have second place all to ourselves now uh, as Baltimore lost. And st still three games back uh, of the Yanks. So let's pull up the box score. We'll get out of here. Tigers win 9-4. to four. Player of the game has got to be Champ Summers, right? Gave us a three-run pinch hit home run to win the game. So I think we have to give it to him. Who was the pitcher of record? Was it Weaver? As we wait for it to continue to load. It is Weaver. So Weaver is 5-0 and in relief. That's fantastic. And Cappy gets a second save. Tigers have four home runs. Uh, surprising home runs from Summers and Tommy Brookins. Trammell gets his 13th. Hancock, as I mentioned, his team-leading 16th home run. Two stolen bases for Trammell. That's amazing. And there's Champ Summers with a three-run shot. So we're going to give him player of the game today. Dewey Robinson... Takes his seventh loss. I can see why he's two and seven. And uh, Jerry Harrison did get his 14th home run. And for a while there, Ken Kravick was um, lights out with only giving up one hit through um, the first five innings. So uh, that's going to be it here from Comiskey Park. Uh, until tomorrow, everyone have a great night.